This is the Cypher Brief's open source daily report, specifically focused on global events that are driving the national security narrative. We break down what's happening in the world the way intelligence agencies do. You can find links to all of the original source reporting in the Cypher Daily Brief, that's a free newsletter from the Cypher Brief, available at thecypherbrief.com. Hello, this is the Cypher Brief's open source report podcast, our curated collection of breaking news stories that impact national security, a collection that you won't find anywhere else. I'm Brad Christian. And I'm Suzanne Kelly. It's Wednesday, September 8th, and the Taliban have announced a new interim Afghan government and have declared the country an Islamic emirate. Mullah Mohammed Hassan Akund, who was close to Taliban co-founder Mullah Omar, will lead the country's cabinet as prime minister. And Sira Houdin Haqqani, leader of the Haqqani militant group and wanted by the FBI, has been named interior minister. The Taliban supreme leader said in a statement that the new government will be regulated by the laws of the holy Sharia. Another story we're following closely is happening right now in New Zealand. Officials there say the websites of several financial institutions and the National Postal Service have been disrupted in an apparent distributed denial of service cyber attack. Maybe it's a good time to pause for a quick moment to remind everyone that the Cypher Brief is launching a new cyber initiatives group that brings together government and private sector leaders from all sectors to address issues like this and how they impact national security. We also have a Cypher Brief expert briefing today, Brad, with Dmitry Oparovich on ransomware's impact on the national security supply chain. So the link to register is in today's newsletter. Unfortunately, the headlines aren't going to continue to be filled by DDoS and ransomware attacks. So I encourage you to check out the cyberinitiativesgroup.com and get involved with us. And one other story, Suzanne, uh, I'd like to bring up today. The former U.S. Pacific commander, Harry Harris, says the United States should conduct a review of its longstanding policy of strategic ambiguity toward Taiwan. Harris said the U.S. defense commitment towards the island needs to be less ambiguous. Harris, who is also a former ambassador to South Korea, says the review is needed to better define responsibilities and achieve greater consistency in policy, such as the Taiwan Relations Act and arms sales. We've talked to Ambassador Joe Detrani at length on this very topic, Brad. It's a favorite of yours, a strategic ambiguity. What does this mean and how does it relate to the U.S.'s continued support um, while China continues on a path to re-integrate uh, uh, Taiwan into China? Well, yeah. let's look at the other open source collection headlines uh, now broken down by region of the world. In the Americas, President Joe Biden told reporters on Tuesday that he expects China will try to work out some arrangement with the Taliban. He says that Pakistan, Russia, and Iran will likely do the same. Experts warn that if China, Russia, or others do reach a final deal or a financial deal with the Taliban, that the West is going to lose its economic leverage over the group and be less able to pressure it to stick to pledges concerning rights and inclusive government. Now, China hasn't formally recognized the Taliban as Afghanistan's rulers, but has expressed a commitment to positively guide and support them. The White House is asking Congress for $24 billion in emergency funding for disaster relief, including recovery from Hurricane Ida, and a $6.4 billion to support the processing and resettlement of Afghan refugees. The request is expected to increase the potential for a budget showdown as Congress considers the request for short-term funding to keep the government running while it debates raising the debt ceiling and passing Biden's wider budget proposals. In Western Europe, the trial of 20 men accused of carrying out the 2015 terrorist attacks in Paris that killed 130 people and wounded hundreds more begins today. Paris security personnel are on high alert and have blocked cars and pedestrians from the area surrounding the building where the trial is taking place. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and German Foreign Minister Heiko Maas will meet at Ramstein Air U.S. Air Base in Germany today to discuss how the countries will cooperate and coordinate the next phase of dealing with the Afghanistan crisis. In a press conference ahead of the meeting, Moss expressed concern about the makeup of the new Afghan government, which includes mostly members of the Islamist militant wing and veterans of the guerrilla war with the West. Hard to see this going well, but um, we'll keep our optimist hat on because it's pretty much all you can do right now. In Central and Eastern Europe, US Special Envoy for Iran, Robert Malley will travel to Moscow and Paris to discuss Iran's nuclear program. The State Department is urging the need to quickly reach and implement an understanding on a mutual return to compliance with the 2015 Iran nuclear deal, of course. And Russian officials say the country's emergencies minister has died in a training accident in the Arctic. Media reports say he died while attempting to rescue a cameraman who had fallen into the water. 
For the reports on that, Suzanne, is that apparently it's looking like he hit his head on a rock when he jumped into the water. So uh, an unusual story for someone that senior ranking, obviously, to be in that situation. In Asia, in Afghanistan, protests, often led by women, are continuing. The unrest poses a risk to the Taliban's ability to effectively rule, and some believe the protests could spread. The Taliban has urged Afghans to be patient as it establishes its government before it addresses demands. Turkey and Qatar are working to restore passenger flights out of Kabul's airport. However, they have not reached an agreement with the Taliban on how to operate the airport. Both countries want to provide technical assistance, but the Taliban are rebuffing Turkey's demands for a Turkish security presence to protect Turkish personnel. Authorities in Hong Kong have arrested four members of a pro-democracy group that organized the city's annual Tiananmen Square vigil last June. The group is accused of failing to provide information to the police under the national security law. Now, police have accused the group of being an agent of foreign forces. Seoul's foreign ministry is reporting that China's foreign minister, Wang Yi, will head to South Korea next week and meet his South Korean counterpart to discuss stalled nuclear talks with North Korea. This comes as the Kyoto News Agency reports that the U.S., South Korea, and Japan may meet next week to discuss North Korea policy, including the feasibility of attempts by Washington to open a dialogue with Pyongyang. Chinese military officials say they deployed air and naval forces to track, monitor, and expel the USS Benfold, a guided missile destroyer that sailed near Mischief Reef, and that's in the disputed Spratly Islands. The incident comes after China introduced a new regulation requiring all foreign vessels to provide information and request permission before entering what Beijing sees as its its territorial waters. Suzanne, we highlighted that one last week. Uh, Expect this is only going to get more tense, uh, you know, with each U.S. or Western transit through uh, international waters. And and as China continues to ratchet up, saying this is our territory. So that'll be one not to watch. All experts say don't take your eyes off that because this is where... You know, a mishap could lead to a larger, a larger conflict. So we're going to watch that closely. Yep, you're right. And uh, in more China-related sort of tension news, the China's People Liberation Army conducted a major high-altitude drill in Tibet using troops, aircraft, and artillery, according to footage posted on the PLA Daily website. Uh, and that was earlier this week on Monday. Experts say the exercises were meant as a warning to India over Himalayan territorial disputes, where which, of course, we've been watching that tension most of the year between China and India in the world's highest altitude conflict. In the Middle East and North Africa, the IAEA has released two reports accusing Iran of not cooperating with investigations into unexplained uranium traces detected at several sites. The reports also say officials have been blocking access to monitoring equipment. Now, Iran's IAEA envoy says that Iran's nuclear activities cannot be stopped as long as U.S. sanctions remain in place. And the group Amnesty International has issued a new report accusing Syrian security and intelligence forces of torturing, raping, and kidnapping refugees who have returned home. The group says it has documented abuses against 66 returnees and includes five deaths of refugees who are being held in custody. In sub-Saharan Africa, Al Jazeera reports that the leaders of the coup in Guinea have now consolidated power and have installed army officers as the leaders of all eight regions. That's the Cypher Reefs Open Source Report for Wednesday, September 8th. Remember, you can find links to all of the original source reporting always in the Cypher Brief's free daily newsletter. Sign up at thecypherbrief.com. We hope to see you today in the Cypher Brief virtual studio for today's expert briefing on ransomware's impact on the national security supply chain with Dmitry Alperovich. The link to register is in today's Cypher Brief newsletter. We'll be back here with you tomorrow with the next open source report from the Cypher Brief. Until then. 